I'm Alex, I'm an archaeologist. I'm a travel scholar from the German Archaeological Institute, which means I got funded to travel the ancient worlds to visit as many sites as possible for one year. Let's get into it. So, maybe I should explain some things first. I'm an archaeologist. I wrote a PhD in Berlin and worked at the University of Zurich for the past one and a half years. And now I got this travel scholarship, which is like a highly prestigious scholarship from the German Archaeological Institute four very good dissertations in our science. Well, that meant I, I had to quit my job for one year and I'm now just traveling all of Europe, parts of North Africa, the Near East, Turkey, parts of Asia, the Black Sea, the Balkan and many other regions for one year with the goal to, to see as many archaeological sites as possible. Mainly sites that I don't know because the goal of all this is that I as an archaeologist have the opportunity to, to see as many places as possible. This is the highly traditional uh, travel scholarship, which, which is given already since 1859 annually, every year. As I said, for good dissertations in archaeology. And this comes from the old tradition like of educational travel. You all know maybe the Italian travels of Goethe and others from this era and they traveled to learn more about the world and to see as many places as possible to raise uh, <laughs> the knowledge let's say yeah time passed by things are a bit different but we travel scholars we are still traveling for one year, not by chariot or by horse anymore, but mostly with a car, camper van, and that's what I do. I build my own van and yeah, living the van life for one year, traveling around. That's it. I am already at the first archaeological site where I wanted to, to come with you. And precisely, I'm in southwestern Germany, the outskirts of the Black Forest, close to the city center of Fillingen, which you can see here in the background. And I'm staying here on the hill overlooking entire area and I choose this site as my first site because Fillingen is my hometown I grew up here and this hill is part of my archaeology curriculum because here it all started I came here as a young child and was fascinated by 
this hill. This hill is an artificial one and it comes from the 7th century BC so it has yeah, almost 2700 years ago it was built by the Celts in this region. And uh, yeah, it is the biggest of its kind in all Central Europe with over 130 meter of width and I don't know 30 meters in high or something. It used to be much higher in ancient times and it was built to uh, be the grave of the local duke, uh, of the chieftain of the Celtic settlement here. Settlement, we don't really know where it is. We found one four kilometers in uh, the forest, so uh, in the, already in the Black Forest. But it's a very small settlement and this tomb here is huge, so we don't know if we can connect it. Yeah, and here, right under my feet, was buried the local chieftain of the Celtic uh, group who settled, which settled here. This chamber was made out of uh, huge wooden um, tiles and uh, was like 15 uh, meters in length and some meters in wide to not only host the dead body of the chieftain but also for sure many uh, grave goods which we also know from other tombs of this kind uh, were containing like the horses of the chieftain, the duke, the ornaments, swords, other weapons even uh, very ornamented chariots with uh, bronzes. So you have to imagine uh, that a really rich and really powerful uh, local duke was buried here since this is the largest Celtic tomb pill in Central Europe and therefore of its kind. But not only here, under this modern wooden bench here where the local chieftain was buried but also all around this hill were like many, many graves of the local community who buried their uh, dead as close as possible to their local chieftain. Archaeologists found here in the 1970s more than 130 of these graves. And unlike the central chamber, which was robbed already in ancient times, those smaller burials were still full of, gra of grave goods of weapons, of ornaments, of jewelry and this place, the wealth and the organization, the highly hierarchical community which was living here under their chieftain. This place not only to me has been always a special place, for me it was like one of the reasons why I started studying archaeology because I was coming here as a child often to play. At that time we still made like fire here on top and barbecues, which is for <laughs> luckily forbidden now. And I want to start my journey of one year here. Of course, the goal is then to travel mostly sites I don't know, but to start here is like really nice and to show you guys my hometown, which is not very famous, not even in Germany. So it should be. <laughs> and as I said, here under us is the medieval city of Fillingen. And for the medieval city, this tomb here was also a very special place. Uh, many things and many stories of the city happened here. Uh, for instance, the famous court for the local witch happened here and she was burned alive right here underneath. But also in the many sieges my town had to undergo in the 30 year war and the Spanish succession war. Uh, this was a special place because like the enemies were often standing here, the generals of the enemies overlooking the city and trying to find a way in. But the roots of the city are actually much older, so we believe it's an old Alemannic settlement. 
which was here already in the 6th, 7th and 8th century. But only in 999, the older city was getting the right to host a market, which was a very important thing at the time. Uh, also economically, of course. And the right to mind their own coins. So this meant that filling in a really important role in this region, also as a trade hub between here the Black Forest, the Alps and then central Germany. This Alemannic settlement became therefore a real city and we have one remaining building of this era and it's the Romanic uh, church tower which is now outside of the city on the other side of the river Brigach. This old Romanic tower was built in the 11th century and represents the old marketplace of the old city because why I'm saying the old city of course the newer city is also very old but it was funded only in the 12th century by the so-called Gens of the Zeringer and the Zeringer they founded many cities all around here in uh, southern central Europe like Freiburg in Breisgau, Fribourg in Switzerland and also Fillingen and they were like highly skilled city builders and this is how they also built from the scratch a new city for Fillingen on the other side of the river uh, Brigach. Therefore they made a new um, city grid. You see like there the city has an oval structure from above but then a central cross with the main roads through it. On every end of those main roads there has been a big city gate and a big city wall surrounding all of that. This almost orthogonal grid is a very special thing for uh, the early medieval times because um, it's highly sophisticated and it is now it is a grown city of course but at that time it was built from the scratch. Okay. Somebody planned it and that already like some yeah, almost thousand years ago. And since I'm now here overlooking my city in the background I have to do one thing before I start my journey. I have to light a candle in the local cathedral underneath the cross of Negelin, the so-called Negelin's Kreuz. This is one myth of my city, which is, and we all believe in it, of course, <laughs> that some peasant found this wooden cross with Jesus on it. It's not a big piece of art or anything. It's just a wooden cross as we all know it. But he brought it into the city walls and it was hung up there in the church. And then in the later times, when Fillingen got besieged, the enemy was standing here, just where I am now, overlooking the city and trying to find weak points. The brave citizen of Fillingen took their their wooden cross and made a procession and this helped us to win all the battles fought in our city. Of all four sieges none of them had succeeded. Three times the Swedish troops were like shooting their cannons for days into the city which you can now still see in our cathedral hanging up there as a sign to not try that again, <laughs> I think. <laughs> and then in the Spanish um, succession war, French troops tried their luck and also failed. And that was mainly due to the help of our cross, which is also depicted on one of the paintings of that time, showing here the uh, enemy troops uh, right here from the Celtic tomb and over the medieval city there is flying this cross and protecting it. Therefore I go down, I light a candle as a good citizen does here and I pray for a good journey and safe return.
And uh, just as a disclaimer, what to expect from this channel. I think I put that on YouTube. You can expect that I take you on all the archaeological sites I visit, that I do research about it and that I show you the sites and hopefully I bring you closer to archaeology, to our past, to our ancestors and to make you interested in the topic or if you are an archaeologist you're maybe interested in just following me on this trip and to see what you have already seen and what I say. So please I would be happy about every comments and of course I'm new to all this uh, videographic stuff. I'm trying my best. I already failed badly today because I planned this all a bit differently as you will see hopefully in the future I have a better setup then. But uh, I'll try my best and I learn while I'm doing and hopefully you enjoy it traveling with me. That should be it for the first episode and stay tuned. Click all the buttons you find there below and we'll see us on the journey. Bye guys. Thank <laughs> you.